So my submission for teacher hacks is using the website Digo. Digo is a social bookmarking site that allows users to save bookmarks uh, online so that they are not tied in particular to any computer. Um, and so you can have an account that you can access from various places. Uh, it is something that I have been doing for a few years now, having been a pretty early adopter of social bookmarks. Um, I actually had to import mine from Delicious uh, when Delicious uh, was bought by Yahoo and decided to change its interface. Um, there are a few really awesome features of Digo that I am excited to show folks. Uh, so this is my Digo library. Um, you can see it's digo.com and then the user bio without walls. And in it, I have a lot of bookmarks saved. Um, so I think I have about 158 pages of bookmarks saved going back to about 2011. And one of the really nice things is when you find a resource that you really like, you can bookmark it so that you can search for it based on tags that are user created. So I have a pretty consistent set of tags, um, publications for anything that involves an article, and then I also tag by subject matter. But what this means is that if I wanted to say find all articles that I had ever saved about evolution, I can just go publications and it'll autofill my tag and then evolution and it'll autofill that and I search. And every thing that is tagged, both evolution and publications comes up. So that's really nice, especially if you save things by media type um, so and by subject matter so that you can really find what you're looking for in, oh, I know I saw this great video, and if I saved it as video and ecology, I can then go and find that. Um, Bedigo has a bunch of other nice features in addition to tag, uh, being able to search by tags. Um, you can see these related tags coming up, which is nice and useful. So if you wanted to look at things that were um, publications about evolution and cell communication, you can see um, that I only have one thing saved. So it has this really nice sort of level of granularity to the search so that if you're looking for something in particular that you've read and it could be, you know, a couple of years ago, um, or it could be something that, you know, you look, you glanced at but wanted to come back to, you then have the option of finding it. But there's some other nice features. So, um, if I go to something that I have saved and if I click this, it'll bring up the bookmarking menu and you can see I've saved this as Evolution, Publications, and History of Science. It's an article about defending Darwin. If you have the Digo book, um, toolbar installed, you can also annotate the page and when you go back to the page, it saves your annotations. And this is really, really nice for me, obviously, but it's also really nice for kids. So I teach a research class and I introduce my students to this. Students prior to this pretty much save their bookmarks by emailing themselves links or just bookmarking everything and then they can't find anything. And so they really like having all their bookmarks in one place as well as the ability to highlight and annotate. So for instance, this is a little highlight. You can put a comment with this. So I can add a comment to a highlight. I can make it private. I can make it public. Um, I tend to default it to private. Um, I can also add sticky notes to the page. So I can add sticky notes in various places by going up to um, comment. Ooh. Uh, comment on the whole page and that'll just give me a comment that applies to the whole thing or add a couple of floating sticky notes. So if you're teaching annotation and how to engage with text, this is a really nice way to do it that's not going to require much more than um, a, the install of this lovely toolbar. Um, and I find that that makes the user experience a lot easier. The other thing that's really nice is if I go to say something I want to save. So this is an article from uh, earlier this month on HIV um, in the New York Times Science section, I can bookmark it and then I can look at, for instance, um, it'll give me the tags I used last time. It'll suggest some tags. Sometimes that's not great. Um, but if I go, you know, type in E, it'll type in everything that begins with E. So you don't really have to have a perfect memory of your tags. You just have to sort of know, all right, I've consistently been tagging things in a specific way. And you can also add a description to this. So a uh, really nice article, definitely used with case study so that um, you can come back to it. The other nice thing is you have the option of making bookmarks private. So um, let's say you found a nice resource that you don't want to share with everybody else, like assessments in particular. Um, that is something I generally click on private, and that way if, you know, there's a database of questions that I don't want kids finding, because I do have this public and link to my Twitter profile, um, 
I would make that private. The other thing is just, you know, uh, if I were looking to buy some new whiteboards at the Home Depot, I don't necessarily have to make that a public bookmark. Um, I have a few things like recipes and uh, wedding plans saved under under private bookmarks. But it's a really, really useful tool. I find that when I'm looking for resources, um, I don't have to, you know, look at everything online that or try to remember things that I've seen before because I can go back and say, you know, I really think I saw something that would work for this really well and it doesn't take me a long time to find it. So uh, I hope other folks find this teacher heck useful. I uh, love the podcast. Uh, Paul and Dave, hope you guys keep it up.